The invitation looked innocent enough, just a glossy black card with the words Halloween Bash printed in looping silver script. Every year, Jess threw the best Halloween party in town. Decorations that could rival any haunted house, a costume contest that actually meant something, and the best part? She somehow had the best haunted stories, making each Halloween feel like it crawled with genuine terror. This year, Jess had promised her most intense setup yet. She'd been hinting at it for weeks, saying how she'd found a real witch's house to host it in. Everyone thought she was joking. The night finally came, and as guests arrived, it became clear Jess wasn't exaggerating. The house was hidden away in a forgotten stretch of woods, overgrown with twisted branches and ivy that choked the path to the front door. The air was colder here, biting. Even though there were dozens of people on their way in and out, it felt eerily quiet. It was strange, like everyone was instinctively whispering. Inside, Jess had transformed the place. Spider webs clung to every corner, mirrors were draped in black, and an overpowering smell of wax and something earthy filled the air. Guests laughed, taking in the spooky decor, sipping on punch. Jess claimed had a secret ingredient, which most people guessed was just vodka. Still, it tasted bitter, almost metallic. Around midnight, the main event began. Jess gathered everyone into the parlor, which was dominated by a large antique mirror that reached nearly to the ceiling. She held up an old key, grinning as she announced that she'd found it hidden in the house when she was setting up. She had researched it, she said, and claimed the key was rumored to unlock some kind of portal hidden in the walls. Everyone chuckled, assuming it was just part of the Halloween act. Jess dimmed the lights and motioned for everyone to stand in a circle. The room felt thicker, the air pressing down as Jess held up the key. She muttered a chant, the words barely audible, but they seemed to crawl down everyone's spine. It was just for effect, everyone thought, but then the mirror started to fog up, despite there being no heat in the room. People laughed nervously, shifting their feet, but Jess just continued, her face taking on a strange, focused expression. Then, something changed. The lights dimmed further, flickering until the room was bathed in near darkness, with only the gleam from the mirror illuminating the group. And in the reflection, everyone could see something, off. A figure, someone who wasn't there in the room. It was a woman, thin and pale, with eyes like dark pits and a twisted mouth that looked frozen mid-scream. She stood behind Jess in the mirror, her eyes darting to each of them. Jess laughed, seemingly oblivious to the creeping figure in the glass, uh, while the guests exchanged wary glances. They assumed it was a projection, maybe a special effect. Jess had gone all out this year, after all. But then, the woman moved forward, her face contorting, and she seemed to press her hand to the glass. Suddenly, a piercing scream ripped through the room, so loud it made everyone wince, clutching their ears. The scream wasn't from Jess, it was coming from the mirror. Everyone froze, rooted to their spots. The woman in the mirror reached her hand through the glass, the surface rippling like water. Her fingers stretched out, claw-like and thin, reaching for Jess. But Jess didn't turn around. She was laughing, continuing her chant, her voice echoing with something ancient, like a chorus of voices instead of just her own. Then the lights went out completely. For what felt like an eternity, there was only silence and darkness. Some guests whispered, feeling around for their phones or for each other, trying to find the exit, but it was impossible to see anything. Then, suddenly, the lights came back on. The woman was gone from the mirror, but so was Jess. A low murmur spread through the crowd, everyone whispering Jess's name, laughing nervously. They assumed she was hiding, planning some dramatic reveal. But minutes ticked by and Jess didn't return. The crowd grew anxious. Someone reached out to touch the mirror, and as soon as their finger made contact, they screamed, pulling back to reveal a blood-red handprint that had burned into their skin. It was hot, like touching a stove. Panic set in, and the guests started running for the door. But as they reached the entrance, they found it locked. The key, Jess's key, lay on the floor next to the mirror, twisted and blackened, as though it had been burned. One of the braver guests tried to break a window, but the glass wouldn't shatter. It just cracked in a spiderweb pattern, revealing dozens of tiny, twisted faces reflected in the shards. Someone screamed, then another, as the figures from the mirror began to appear in each piece of glass in the house. Shards, bottles, anything that could hold a reflection. 
The ghostly figures clawed at the glass, their mouths moving in silent cries, their hands scraping against an invisible barrier. Then the house began to shake. Dust rained down from the ceiling and the temperature plummeted, so cold that people could see their breath. They huddled together, backing away from the mirrors, avoiding any reflective surface, but there was no way out. Every door they tried was locked and every window just showed more of those faces. The last thing anyone saw before the lights went out for good was Jess's reflection appearing in the mirror again, but she was different. Her eyes were black voids, her mouth stretched into a cruel smile. She held up a finger to her lips as though signaling for silence. Then she reached through the glass, her fingers pulling one of the guests by their collar. The guests screamed, but no one could move, frozen in horror as they watched her get pulled into the glass, vanishing with a horrified expression etched into her face. By morning, the house was empty, but the mirrors all held new images, faint reflections of terrified faces, mouths open in silent screams. And on the front door, someone had written in blood red letters, join us next year. The sun had just dipped below the horizon, leaving the woods in an eerie half-light when four friends, Sarah, Mike, Chris, and Jenna, pulled up to an abandoned farmhouse on the outskirts of town. Rumor had it that the place had a dark history, something about a series of disappearances back in the 60s. People swore the house was haunted, and for years it sat neglected, an eyesore hidden behind tall grass and twisted trees. But tonight, fueled by bravado and a few beers, the four friends decided to explore it. The house seemed alive, even from a distance. Its windows were empty, gaping like dead eyes, and the walls were streaked with black stains that looked disturbingly fresh. As they stepped out of the car, a chill settled over them. It felt different here, colder, even though it was a warm October night. Mike, the self-proclaimed fearless one, led the way up the sagging porch steps. Each creak seemed to echo in the stillness. When they reached the door, he grinned and pulled out his flashlight, flicking it on as he swung the door open. They stepped inside, the beam casting shadows on peeling wallpaper and empty doorways. The first room looked relatively untouched, save for a thick layer of dust and cobwebs. The air was stale, thick with the scent of mildew and something else, something metallic. Mike waved his flashlight around, illuminating fragments of old furniture, a broken lamp, and a crooked painting on the wall. Creepy, but not that bad, Jenna muttered, her voice barely above a whisper. Sarah wasn't convinced. The house felt wrong, like it was watching them, waiting. They moved through the rooms, laughing nervously as they took in each decayed corner. Every so often, Chris would snap a photo, his phone's flash illuminating the dark in brief bursts. After a while, he noticed something strange. In every photo, there was a faint shadow, a figure that none of them had seen. It stood just outside the frame, a dark outline that seemed to be watching. Hey, look at this, Chris whispered, showing them the photos. They huddled around, squinting at the strange figure. It looked like a man, tall and gaunt, with hollow eyes and a twisted expression. Probably just a shadow, Mike shrugged, trying to laugh it off, but his voice wavered. Let's keep going. As they climbed the stairs to the second floor, Sarah's unease grew. She couldn't shake the feeling that they were being followed. The steps groaned under their weight, and each creak seemed to echo louder than the last. When they reached the top, they found themselves in a narrow hallway lined with closed doors. They split up to explore. Sarah and Chris went to the left, while Mike and Jenna went to the right. As they walked, Sarah felt a chill on the back of her neck. She turned, expecting to see Chris, but he was several feet behind her, focused on the pictures on his phone. Did you feel that? Sarah whispered. He looked up, confused, and shook his head. They pushed open the door to one of the bedrooms and froze. The walls were covered in deep scratches, as though someone had clawed at them desperately. Broken glass littered the floor, glinting in the faint moonlight that seeped through the shattered window. In the center of the room was a small, decrepit bed, its sheets rumpled and stained with something dark. Let's get out of here, Chris muttered, backing toward the door but before they could leave, they heard a scream. It was Jenna. Sarah and Chris bolted down the hall, finding Jenna and Mike standing in front of an open closet. Jenna's face was pale, her eyes wide with terror as she pointed inside. Sarah stepped forward to look, her heart hammering in her chest, 
Inside the closet, a small figure lay crumpled, half hidden beneath a pile of rotting clothes. It was a doll, but not like any doll Sarah had ever seen. Its face was cracked, the paint peeling to reveal something dark underneath, and its eyes, its eyes were hollow, black pits that seemed to stare right at her. Suddenly, the doll's head jerked. Its mouth opened in a silent scream, and Sarah stumbled back, nearly tripping over her own feet. She looked up at Jenna, who was shaking, clutching Mike's arm. It, it moved, Jenna stammered. It looked right at me. Mike tried to laugh, but it came out hollow. It's just a doll. Probably wind or something. Just then, the door slammed shut. They all spun around, staring at it, paralyzed with fear. A low, scraping sound echoed through the room like nails dragging against the wall. Slowly, the sound grew, coming closer until it was right outside the door. Let's get out of here, Chris hissed, fumbling with the doorknob, but it wouldn't budge. It was as if something on the other side was holding it shut. Panic set in, and they started pounding on the door, screaming for help, but their voices were swallowed by the thick silence of the house. Suddenly, the door burst open, and they stumbled out, nearly falling over each other. They raced down the stairs, their footsteps thunderous in the empty house. But as they reached the front door, they froze. Standing in the doorway was the figure from Chris's photos. The man was real, taller than any of them, with a gaunt, skeletal face and eyes that were nothing more than dark voids. His mouth stretched into a twisted grin, revealing teeth that were impossibly sharp. Without thinking, they bolted in the opposite direction, sprinting in through the house, desperate to find another exit. They could hear footsteps behind them, slow and deliberate, echoing through the halls. No matter how fast they ran, the footsteps grew closer, steady and relentless. They reached the back door, and Mike threw his shoulder against it, finally breaking it open. They tumbled out into the night, gasping for breath, hearts pounding. But when they turned back to look at the house, they saw him. He stood in the broken doorway, his dark eyes fixed on them. Then, slowly, he raised his hand, pointing one long, bony finger in their direction. A low, guttural laugh echoed from the house, filling the air around them. The friends didn't stop running until they reached their car. As they sped away, Jenna glanced in the rearview mirror, expecting to see the house shrinking in the distance. But it wasn't. It seemed to follow them. The figure in the doorway growing larger, closer, no matter how far they drove. When they finally reached town, the house had vanished, as though it had never been there. They looked at each other, pale and shaken, unable to speak. But as they caught their breath, Jenna let out a scream. There, in the back seat, was the doll, its eyes hollow and dark, staring straight at her. From that night on, none of them could sleep. Every time they looked into a mirror or a shadow, they saw him, the tall, hollow-eyed man standing just behind them, waiting, always watching. And every Halloween after that, they'd find a new doll waiting on their doorstep, its eyes darker, emptier, as though they were slowly losing pieces of their own souls to him. To this day, no one dares to go near that house. But some say if you listen close enough on Halloween night, you can still hear the sound of footsteps getting closer. On Halloween night, a group of friends, Lily, Marcus, Ben, and Carla, decided to explore an infamous local legend, the Hollow Grove Woods. The townspeople always warned kids to stay away, claiming the forest had a spirit that devoured those who entered after dark. It was the kind of urban legend that kept people curious, but at a distance. But this Halloween, the friends were ready for a real scare and couldn't resist the pull of Hollow Grove. They met at dusk at the edge of the woods, armed with flashlights and a sense of cocky excitement. Lily laughed as they hiked in, brushing off the feeling of being watched. The trail was barely visible, winding through thick trees that blocked the fading sunlight. As they got deeper, the temperature dropped and the air became heavy, thick, with an earthy, damp smell that seemed to cling to them. Let's try to find the old cabin, Marcus suggested. He had heard rumors that the original owners, a family from the early 1900s, had all mysteriously vanished. They followed an overgrown path that led deeper into the woods, laughing and trying to spook each other with fake ghost stories. But as they walked, the atmosphere shifted. The woods grew silent, the only sound being the crunch of leaves underfoot. Then they heard a whisper. It was faint at first, like a sigh carried by the wind, but then it grew louder, more distinct. It was a voice, 
a woman's voice, calling out softly, almost pleadingly. Help me, please. They froze, exchanging glances, their nerves finally getting the better of them. Ben laughed it off nervously. Probably just the wind. Old woods make weird sounds, but his voice trembled. They pressed on, but the voice continued, following them, always just out of sight, growing clearer with every step. It wasn't just words anymore. They could hear sobbing now, deep and painful, when it echoing around them. Lily shivered, her stomach twisting with unease. Let's go back, Carla said, her voice shaking. But Marcus, determined to prove he wasn't afraid, ignored her. Come on, we've come this far, he urged, waving them forward. Reluctantly, they followed, though each step felt heavier, the air colder. They finally reached the cabin, an old crumbling structure that looked like it hadn't been touched in decades. The door hung off one hinge and the windows were broken, yet the glass dark with dirt. They hesitated, but Marcus pushed open the door, shining his flashlight inside. The beam illuminated dust swirling in the air, and for a moment they could make out a set of old furniture covered in sheets, a broken chair in the corner, and a fireplace filled with ashes. Suddenly the door slammed shut behind them. They all spun around, but no one was there. The cabin was silent, except for the sound of their breathing, now shallow and panicked. Marcus laughed, trying to mask his own fear, but it sounded hollow, forced. Probably just the wind, he said, but his voice cracked. They tried to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. It felt like something was holding it shut from the outside. That's when they noticed the scratch marks on the walls, long, deep gouges that looked like they had been made by fingernails. There were dozens of them, all leading down toward the floor. Let's get out of here, Carla whispered, her voice barely audible. Then they heard it again, that same whisper, only this time it was coming from inside the cabin. Help me, please. The voice was closer now, almost right beside them, but there was no one there. Then the flashlight flickered and died, plunging them into darkness. They fumbled with their phones, their hands shaking, but none of the lights would work. It was as though something was draining the power, pulling the life out of everything. Lily felt something brush against her arm, a cold, clammy touch that made her jump back, gasping. She tried to scream, but no sound came out. In the dark, she could feel it. Something moving, shifting around them, as though they were surrounded. Finally, Ben managed to get his flashlight working again, and he shone at the corner of the room. The beam landed on a figure. A woman crouched on the floor, her back turned to them. She was pale, with long, matted hair that covered her face, and her clothes were tattered, caked with mud and something darker. The friends froze, paralyzed by fear. The woman's head turned slowly, too slowly, until they could see her face. Her eyes were hollow, dark pits, and her mouth was twisted into a horrible, unnatural grin. She looked at each of them, her gaze piercing, as though she could see straight into their souls. Help me, she whispered again, but her mouth didn't move. The voice seemed to come from all around them, echoing in their minds, filling them with a dread that felt like it was eating them from the inside. Suddenly she lunged toward them, her mouth stretching impossibly wide, her face contorting with rage. They screamed, scrambling to the door, but it still wouldn't open. Ben threw himself against it, pounding and shouting, but it was no use. Then, as suddenly as it had started, the woman vanished. The door swung open, and they stumbled out, gasping for air, too afraid to look back. They ran through the woods, branches scratching at their faces, roots tangling around their feet, but they didn't stop until they reached the edge of the trees. When they finally stopped, panting and looking back, the cabin was gone. In its place was only darkness, as though it had never been there. They drove home in silence, each too shaken to speak. But that night, as they tried to sleep, they could still hear her voice whispering in their ears. The next morning, they all woke with scratch marks down their arms and necks, deep and raw, as though someone had clawed at them in the night. And from that day forward, each of them was haunted by strange dreams of the woman, of the cabin, of those hollow, black eyes. Years later, Lily was the only one left, the others having vanished one by one under mysterious circumstances. She could feel it, the weight of those hollow eyes always watching, waiting. Every Halloween, she would hear the whisper, soft but insistent. Help me, please. On the edge of town, tucked away between thick, ancient trees, stood the Dunhill Estate, a sprawling mansion that no one dared to visit. Everyone in the town knew the story, 
50 years ago, the entire family that lived there mysteriously vanished on Halloween night, leaving everything behind. Dinner plates still on the table, clothes folded in drawers, and candles burning low. Only one thing was missing from the house, the large, ornate mirror that once hung in the dining room. People said the mirror was cursed, that it trapped the souls of those who looked into it too long, keeping them forever within its dark glass. But when Halloween rolled around, college friends Zoe, Max, Claire, and Lucas thought it would be the perfect night to explore the mansion. They had heard the stories and, with a laugh, brushed off any fears as superstition. The thought of wandering through an old, abandoned mansion on Halloween night was thrilling. Besides, Lucas had a knack for finding old places and connecting with spirits, as he liked to say. And the group was curious to see what the hype was about. Armed with flashlights and barely suppressed excitement, they drove through town, following winding roads until they reached the edge of the woods. The Dunhill Estate loomed over them, a towering structure draped in ivy and shadow, its windows dark and empty. The wind whistled through the trees, and an eerie silence fell over them as they approached the front door. Inside, the mansion smelled of rot and age, the air thick with dust and decay. The floors creaked beneath their feet, and every sound echoed through the cavernous rooms. They made their way through the foyer, admiring the faded grandeur of the place. Elaborate chandeliers, dusty portraits on the walls, and furniture that looked like it had been untouched for decades. They finally reached the dining room, where the remnants of an old, decaying feast still sat on the table. A strange feeling washed over Zoe, but she shrugged it off. That's when Claire spotted it. In the corner of the room was the infamous mirror, tall and dark, its frame made of twisted metal that seemed to writhe in the dim light. Is that the mirror? Max asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Lucas grinned, walking up to it. Looks like it. Guess we found the prize. The mirror was larger than any of them had expected, reaching almost to the ceiling. The glass was dark, reflecting only shadows, and as they stood before it, they felt an unnatural pull, like it was drawing them closer. Zoe shivered, looking at their reflections. Something seemed wrong. Their faces were there, but slightly distorted, as though something were bending their images from behind the glass. Maybe we shouldn't look at it for too long, Zoe suggested, stepping back, but Lucas laughed, leaning closer. Afraid of a little old glass, Zoe? He teased, but his laughter faded as he stared into the mirror, his eyes going wide. The others watched as his expression twisted, fear taking over his face. Then he started to mumble, I, I see something. The rest of them turned to look, drawn in despite the dread clawing at them. In the mirror, they saw the reflection of the room, dim, decayed, silent. But then, one by one, figures began to appear. Pale, shadowy faces emerged behind their reflections. Each face twisted in a silent scream, their hollow eyes fixed on the group. The faces were moving, pressing against the glass as if trying to break through, their hands reaching, clawing at the surface. And then Zoe saw it, the family that had vanished. Their faces were stretched and contorted, mouths open wide as if they had been screaming for decades. Their eyes locked onto her, cold and accusing. Claire tried to pull back, but her reflection didn't move. She stood frozen, watching as her reflection stayed glued to the mirror, even as she backed away. She let out a strangled gasp, turning to the others in terror. I, I can't move. My reflection isn't moving. Max tried to laugh it off, but... His voice cracked as he realized the same thing was happening to him. In the mirror, his reflection was standing perfectly still, staring back at him with eyes that weren't his own. Eyes that were dark, empty, and filled with malice. Panic set in as they all tried to look away, but it was as though something held them there, forcing them to stare into the glass. Shadows twisted and writhed around their reflections, taking on strange, horrific shapes. Faces with wide, blackened eyes, hands reaching out from every corner of the mirror, fingers sharp and bony, clawing desperately. Then Lucas's reflection began to speak, though his mouth in reality didn't move. Stay with us, it whispered, in a voice that was both his own and something else. We're so lonely. It's so dark in here. With a scream, Lucas broke free, stumbling back, his face pale and his eyes wide. But the others were still transfixed, their reflections now moving on their own, waving, smiling, even though they felt terror pulsing through them. 
In the mirror, their faces began to distort, stretching into twisted, unrecognizable expressions as the reflections seemed to whisper promises, begging them to come closer. Lucas grabbed Zoe's arm, pulling her back, snapping her out of the trance. She stumbled, gasping, but Max and Claire were still staring, frozen, their bodies stiff, hands reaching toward the mirror as though pulled by invisible strings. Desperate, Zoe tried to pull them back, but it was no use. In the mirror, she saw them, pale and vacant, their reflections now separate from their bodies, slowly melding into the shadowy figures trapped within the glass. Finally, Claire blinked, shaking herself out of the trance, but her eyes were blank, as though part of her were still inside the mirror. She stumbled back, looking lost and dazed. Max, however, remained fixed, staring blankly as though something had already claimed him. Zoe and Lucas grabbed Claire, pulling her toward the door. But Max didn't move. His reflection, wearing a twisted grin, waved goodbye as they screamed for him, begging him to snap out of it. In a final desperate attempt, Zoe reached out, her hand brushing the surface of the mirror as she tried to pull him away. But the glass was ice cold, and her fingers felt numb, like something was reaching back, wrapping around her hand with a grip as cold as death. With a scream, she yanked her hand away, stumbling back just as Max's reflection grinned wider, his face sinking deeper into the shadows until he disappeared. The mirror went dark, its surface smooth and empty, as though no one had ever been there. They didn't stop running until they reached the car, and even then, the silence was deafening. Claire stared at her hands, still trembling, mumbling to herself about the faces, the voices. She had seen them in the mirror, and she swore that they had whispered her name, promising she would return. That night, back at home, Zoe could still feel the icy touch of the mirror's surface on her hand. She barely slept, haunted by memories of the faces, the hollow eyes, and Max's reflection, staring back with a look of twisted satisfaction. The next day, they went back to the mansion with the police, desperate to find Max. But when they reached the dining room, the mirror was gone. In its place, they found only an empty, dust-covered wall. And every year on Halloween, Zoe and Lucas hear it, the faint sound of laughter, a whisper just out of reach. And when they pass by a mirror, they sometimes catch a glimpse of him, Max's face trapped, staring back at them, his mouth moving in a silent scream, still calling them to join him.